Hello friends, in this video I'll be discussing print all subsets problem. So given a set of distinct integers, we need to return all the possible subsets. That is the power set. So consider this input array having 1, 2 and 3. So the output will be its subset. So as we know that if there are n elements, so the output will contain 2 to the power n. Like there are right now three elements, so the number of elements in power set would be eight, including the set itself as well as the empty set. So we need to print these subsets. So we can solve this by using many ways, like we can use backtracking, even we can use bit manipulation. So I'll be using backtracking. As we know like there are choices available and in each choice we need to have, we need to take decisions like whether we can include this number or not. So we will be considering first including the number then after that not including the number. So by this way we can have choices available. So if there are decisions and choices it means that there will be a recursion tree. So I'll be explaining the recursion tree for this example. So this is our input array having 1, 2 and 3. So in recursion tree, the main role is like we will traverse each element and for each element we will explore, we'll find all its possibilities and when the possibility gets exhausted, we will do backtrack and move to the next element and again we will traverse and find all its possibilities. So by this way we can print the desired output. Okay, so consider this input array. So first of all, it will store 1 as the result as an answer vector. Now after traversing 1, the possibilities from 1 will be 1, 2. Again the possibility will be 1, 2 and 3. Now from this point, as no elements are there in input array, so there will be no traverse from this 1, 2, 3. So it will do backtrack. Now 1, 2 as we have explored for 3, now there are no elements again in input array. So it will do backtrack. From this node we have explored 1, 2. So now we need to explore for the next element that is 1 comma 3. Again there are no elements left in input array. So we have explored all the possibilities from 1. So we will be return again and start exploring for the next element that is 2. Okay. So from 2 we can explore further having 2 comma 3. So right now no more elements are there. So we'll do backtrack. We have explored 2. Again we'll be doing backtrack and explore the next element inside input array that is 3. So from 3 we can make this and as there are no more elements further so we'll not be able to explore 3. So we'll be doing backtrack. So as our input array gets explored completely. So the elements which are there in this recursion tree like the nodes, all the nodes will be the output for this subset. Okay. So the output vector which will be returning a vector inside another vector will contain all the nodes as an answer. So if we see the nodes like 1, 2, 3 we have explored 1 from 1 the possibility of getting the subset is 1, 1, 2, 1, 3 and 1, 2, 3. Now after exploring 1 we move to 2. From 2 we can get 2 and 2, comma 3. After completing 2 we will go for 3 and from 3 the only possibility left is 3 itself. So these are the subsets which we need to print as an answer. I think it's very simple. I will be making a helper function inside the main function and will pass all the details which is required to solve this problem. 
this is the answer vector which will contain this output of the problem this is the current that is the subset vector which will contain this subsets this is the main input array starting index the starting index will be zero initially because we'll be starting from zero index of the input array and this is the size of the input array so initially in the main function i'll be making this result that is the answer vector and the curve vector so curve vector is empty so i'll call this helper function from the main function and inside the output vector i'll be pushing this empty vector because as we know that power set contains empty set also so initially in the output array suppose this is the output array so initially there will be an empty vector empty set inside the output array now after that i'll have a loop which will traverse all the elements in the input array so initially the value of index is 0 so in curl dot pushback i'll be passing arr of 0 this is arr so arr of 0 is 1 so inside current vector i have passed this one and will recur for the next element so i plus 1 will be 0 plus 1 1 so now index changes to 1 initially it was 0 now it changed to 1 inside this rest dot push back the value of curl has changed from empty to this so it will have this as an in output array okay now the value of index changed from 0 to 1 now it will start from 1 to n and in curl dot push back it was like only one now we'll have the next element that is 2 1 2 2 so in this i plus 1 from 1 it has changed to 2 and will pass as a value for index so again it will recur for the next element in the input array up to the size so rest dot push back the value of curl from vector 1 has changed to 1 comma 2 so inside this output array will have 1 comma 2 so again it will go in this direction i plus 1 will change again and it will have 1 comma 2 comma 3 so initially it was 0 so 0 plus 1 1 it called for 1 then after that we have 1 comma 2 as an output in this part now 1 plus 1 2 so again it call for 2 the same helper function which is a recursive function so rest dot push back in the curl it was 1 comma 2 now we have 3 so we'll be adding 1 comma 2 comma 3 in this output array so this rest dot push back like after this function there is rest dot push back which will contain all the output vectors all the subsets so it will be the rest will be the output vector or the answer vector so suppose after that there is nothing to traverse or nothing to explore with so this will help to return to the caller so the caller of 1 comma 2 comma 3 is 1 comma 2 so it will return to 1 comma 2 so it will return this to the caller so helper function was the caller now it will do cur dot pop back so this 3 will get eliminated and now it it will change to 1 comma 2 and will start iteration again so as there are no possibility there are no elements left for exploring because we have already explored 1 comma 2 comma 3 so again it will return to the caller and will do curl dot pop back so again this 2 will get eliminated and it will return to this 1 now we have explored 1 comma 2 now uh, there are there is only one element left with to explore so we'll be exploring 1 comma 3 so exploring 1 comma 3 and this result dot push back 
will have one comma three as its in as its output answer. So by this way, we can have our output vector. I hope that this logic is clear to you. The output that is print all the distinct subset. The solution set must not contain any duplicate subsets. Okay. So so the return type is vector and inside vector. So I'll be creating my result vector which will contain the output. Okay, and the subset vector. So this is a sub subset vector. Now after this, I'll have the size of the input array. Now we'll create helper function. So I'll pass this result. Subset vector that is the curve vector, input vector, size, and index. So index means the starting position, like from where which position I'll be starting this traversing. Okay. So this helper function will contain the logic, and after having solved or after reaching the goal, we will return our result vector. Okay, so void helper and have passed result. Copy and paste. Hmm. So I'll pass the reference. Then curve vector. Then this nums after that I'll have the size and index. Okay. So this is the helper function which will contain the logic. So I need to pass empty set first. So this is my output vector and inside this I'll first have my empty subset vector which is the curve vector. Okay. Now we'll have loop for traversing the element. Hmm. Will be I plus plus. Yeah. Then inside curve I'll pass the first element of my input array. It will be pushed back. I'll pass the first element of my input array and will recur for the next element. Nums n and i plus 1 for the next element and we'll do backtrack it means we'll do pop back by removing the last element okay so i've already explained the logic behind this yeah I run code Yeah, so this is all about subset problem.